all right uh, assalamu alaikum uh, this is the habin nadim and uh, this is uh, i'm going to start the video lecture number 2 of the topic carburetors uh, in the last class we had a brief discussion regarding the previous topics which we studied in internal combustion engines uh, then we started off with a uh, with a new topic of carburetors which is one of the most essential components of internal combustion engine then we had a look regarding the carburetion we discussed what is carburetion and what is the purpose of carburetor we we had a brief discussion regarding it and we concluded uh, by saying that the carburetors are those devices which forms the air fuel mixture and not only it forms the air fuel mixture but it also atomizes the fuel it also atomizes the fuel depending upon the various load conditions and uh, why the atomization is important in order to ensure the formation of homogeneous mixture then we discuss the factors which affects the carburetion uh, first one was the engine speed that how the variation in engine speeds regulates the uh, requirement of the air fuel mixture then we had a discussion regarding the regarding the vaporization characteristics of the regarding the vaporization characteristics of the fuel that if the fuel is volatile it is going to make a more homogeneous Uh, mixture the third factor which we discussed was the temperature of an incoming air that high, uh, and we concluded it by saying that higher the higher the incoming temperature of air will increases the vaporization of a fuel but it will in, which, which is basically a benefit it will increase the vaporization but uh, the disadvantage from in, uh, increasing the temperature of incoming air is that it will reduce the volumetric efficiency of the engine as the mass of the air has been uh, reduced which is going into the combustion engine combustion chamber so the volumetric efficiency will decrease the last factor which we discussed was of uh, engine design and uh, we discussed it that when you have when we have a uh, different uh when we have a number of cylinders in an engine and we want to supply the same air fuel air fuel ratio in the each cylinder and for that purpose the designing of an engine is uh, very important then we discussed the we started with the air fuel mixture requirements and we had a brief discussion in fact a detailed discussion regarding the chemical chemically correct or you can say stoichiometric mixture then we studied the rich mixture and lean mixture as well and uh, we also discussed this this diagram as well uh, in which uh, we concluded by saying that from uh, 15 to something let's say like 17 this is the combustible range at this within this range uh, your ic engine will operate um, uh, your ic engine will operate uh, quite comfortably and but uh, if you go beyond beyond this range when the mixture is either too rich uh, we have a less amount of oxygen so improper combustion may occur or your flame propagation may not even uh, uh, may not uh, and your flame may not propagate throughout the combustion chamber similarly it was in the case of the lean mixture if we have a too much air molecules uh, they will not allow the fuel to burn as well in fact they will start uh, they will they will not uh, propagate the fuel propagate the flame in 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 the whole combustion chamber then we had a, a, a we discuss these graph in fact they, this is they, they are two graphs uh, air fuel ratio and power output and the second one is of air fuel ratio and brake specific fuel consumption and we concluded this graph by saying that whenever we require higher power we have to provide a rich air fuel mixture this this is this is the stoichiometric mixture line this is your stoichiometric mixture line and if we provide the rich rich mixture which is on the left side of 
this stoichiometric mixture line uh, then we can have a best power output which is which which is the requirement in the case of uh, acceleration or in the idling case and then uh, we also discussed this second graph which was of the air fuel ratio and the brake specific fuel consumption in this graph in this graph we we basically concluded that when you are operating under the normal conditions or you have a cruising operation then you will not provide a stoichiometric mixture rather you will provide the best economy mixture which is slightly slightly leaner than the stoichiometric mixture so under normal condition it is it is desirable to have a maximum economy mixture but when you require a for a quick acceleration or maximum power you have require a rich mixture when you require more power you will send rich mixture when you require best economy you will send low mix uh, you will, we will send lean mixture so now uh, further continuing uh, this topic i uh, you guys must have noticed that i was uh, using a word idling conditions or maybe you must have also heard saying starting conditions so um, idling condition or starting conditions are basically those condition when you start your ic engine or when when you start your car then there is no load on the engine you have just started your car so engine engine is basically running without load and we require more power to overcome the friction between the parts okay so this is this is an important point here which needs to be understand uh, the stationary parts of the ic engine are static and uh, you need you require some additional you require uh, more power in order to move the those stationary parts those uh, stationary parts of your car or your ic engine so what what we need to do is we we will provide a rich air fuel mixture okay we will provide a rich air fuel mixture there is also another factor which needs to be taken care of and that is of exhaust gas dilution so if you want to understand the exhaust gas dilution we will have to understand that we will have to understand this figure okay uh, by the word exhaust gas dilution you can simply uh, understand it by saying that your air fresh air fuel mixture is coming in and they are being diluted by the exhaust gases which was in your ic engine but the question is how are they going to uh, how are they going to dilute the fresh air air coming a, a fresh air fuel mixture which is coming from the carburetor so let's say you have uh, this is your ic engine and you have in the inside this combustion chamber you have exhaust gases your fresh air fuel mixture when you started your engine your fresh air fuel mixture is coming from carburetor you can you have to you you should know that this throttle valve will not be opened properly it will be slightly opened and only very few amount of air fuel mixture is would be coming from here and it will be of some pressure around 0.3 bar but inside this combustion chamber the pressure of the flue gases will be high and when the inlet valve is opened this this exhaust gases will flow these exhaust gases will flow into the intake manifold because the pressure inside the intake manifold is lower than the pressure inside the combustion chamber which is around 1.2 bars and inside the in intake manifold we have a pressure of 0.3 bar so in that case this exhaust gases will dilute 
these exhaust gases will dilute the fresh incoming air fuel mixture and when the piston goes down it will come again inside the combustion chamber for combustion and in that case your in that case your fresh air fuel mixture has been diluted okay so which will which will ultimately affects your combustion and you will get you uh, there will be some power losses and you will not get the proper uh, proper output which is desirable to overcome the friction between the static parts so uh, what we do is so you, uh, you you can simply say that because of the pressure difference initially there will be a backflow of the exhaust gases into the intake manifold which will ultimately which will ultimately dilute your fresh incoming air okay diluted more by the exhaust gases uh, which will result in the poor combustion and as a result in loss of power so what we do to overcome this situation is we will provide some additional fuel or you can say we will provide rich air fuel mixture rich fuel air mixture and by the word rich fuel air mixture is that we will have a more fuel, we will have more fuel particles as compared uh, we will have uh, more fuel particles along with the uh, uh, with the air particles means i i explained you the uh, fuel uh, rich fuel mixture in the last lecture as well that uh, for example if a molecule requires 10 air molecule if a molecule of a fuel requires 10 air molecules for proper combustion for stoichiometric combustion and instead of providing 10 molecules i have provided 8 molecules of air this will be called an uh, this will be called the air fuel uh, rich air fuel mixture so it, it is in such uh, it is uh, such is the uh, uh, scenario we have here we will provide a large amount of a fuel uh, more molecules of a fuel uh, with this with the air so we can have a rich air fuel mixture rich fuel air mixture and it will ultimately we in what hap what will happen is here is that more fuel particles inside the combustion chamber will have a greater chance for a combustion and ultimately which will give you the power your desired power output which will overcome this which will overcome this friction between the parts so uh, this is this is all about the idling idling condition or the starting condition of your uh, engine next uh, we have is a cruising or normal power condition so a uh, cruising and a normal power condition is basically that that condition uh, uh, at which your engine is operating with a normal with a uh, you can say with a constant speed or with a constant load there is no load variation so uh, at this point we do not require a rich air fuel mixture but in fact if we if we have a look at the previous uh, graph which we studied that under the normal conditions uh, under the normal conditions we will slightly we will provide a slightly lean air fuel mixture because uh, we would be getting same we would be getting the best economy in that uh, in that scenario which is which which is good because your fuel we will have uh, your engine will be consuming less fuel your engine will be consuming less fuel so it is it is good that if under the normal condition if you are providing a, a lean air fuel mixture your uh, you will have a lower brake specific fuel consumption and uh, your and uh, your power outputs uh, would be same since the uh, since the engine is already operating on in the, on those conditions so uh, and another important factor in the cruising is that we do not have a exhaust gas dilution problem here in exhaust gas dilution problem in, in normal conditions or in cruising condition is relatively low fuel economy has maintained as engine run for almost for most of the period uh, lean mixture is required so uh, from this curve you can also see that when you when you have started your engine 
you required rich air fuel mixture and as the throttle valve has opened something around let's say 30 percent so 30 percent 30 to 35 percent you can say and we have uh, we have started providing the requirement for the engine becomes constant almost constant okay so we will be providing lean air fuel mixture in that scenario for let's say something around uh, 75 percent 75 to 80 percent but when the throttle valves opens beyond that so we need to provide again the rich mixture and that is in the case of uh, maximum power output or the acceleration case under the normal conditions when you are operating your car on in on the city roads your throttle valve is generally open for something around 20 to 60 percent 65 percent but when you are uh, uh, pressing your accelerated pedal more than that then you will require some additional fuel air mixture you will require rich air fuel mixture to generate more power so that your uh, IC engine operates on that higher loads as well so uh, when you when you have a maximum power or acceleration condition rich mixture is required for two reasons firstly to provide best power output secondly and the second one is quite interesting as well secondly enriching the mixture reduces the flame temperature this needs to be understand quite carefully enriching the mixture reduces the flame temperature what will happen here is that since we have additional molecules of the fuel they will start absorbing the energy uh, inside the combustion chamber instead of getting combusted they will start absorbing the energy which will ultimately reduce the cooling requirements of your IC engine you will have to uh, reject lesser amount of heat from your IC engine and uh, not only that it will also increase the life of your valves when your engine is operating at higher power so it is giving you two advantages first it is providing the best power output second second it has reduced the flame temperatures and thus reducing the cooling thus reducing the cooling problems of the IC engine and not only that but it has also re uh, reduced the tendency to damage the valves as well well your valves are the uh, most uh, most prone to uh, prone to damage and uh, you have to uh, uh, your valve seats are most commonly damaged when your engine uh, is, deter is starting deteriorating so uh, with with the with this with the reducing flame temperature you can uh, with the reducing flame temperature you can simply increase the life of your uh, valves up to around 15 to 20 percent moving forward now uh, we have uh, we have uh, the basic components of the carburetor and uh, in the in these basic concept uh, basic components uh, we will start with the fuel strainer on the right side we have a simple schematic diagram of a carburetor this is a schematic diagram of a simple carburetor this carburetor does not have any auxiliary equipments which the modern carburetor does have uh, it is a simple basic diagram basic schematic of a carburetor and start we are starting off with a fuel strainer here you can see this is your fuel strainer the your fuel is coming from here from your fuel storage tank then it will pass it it will pass through the strainer if it has some dust particles or some other impurities as, as well uh, it will get stuck in the strainer while your fuel will start flowing into the fuel supply valve so this is the purpose of the strainer the purpose of the strainer is simply to block any 
dust particles or any other particles in uh, which are in your which are present in your fuel so the end uh, moving towards the next part uh, next component next next component important one of the most important component of your simple carburetor is of float chamber float chamber with a float to store supply and adjust level of fuel so you can you can see here that your fuel from strainer has now come in this tank this is your float chamber this tank is your float chamber this section is your float and this section which I am highlighting here is your float pivot what will happen here is uh, it will it will reduce uh, when when the level of this float pivot is de decreased the fuel from the fuel which is coming from the strainer will enter here in the fuel chamber and when this float pivot level reaches that point here it will it will block the it will it will block the supply line and no fuel will enter in the fuel chamber unless there is a decrease there is again decrease in the fuel level there will be no additional fuel coming from strainer inside the float chamber so it will uh, so the uh, it will the phenomena will remain same the float pivot level will decrease fuel will come and when it reaches to the same level the fuel will not come when that level decreases the fuel will start coming back again and when the level reaches the same the fuel will not come okay so this is this is all about the float chamber uh, with a float it, it is basically storing and uh, supplying the fuel as well i will discuss the supply part later and adjusting the fuel level inside the combustion inside the uh, fuel chamber as well so next part is a round cylinder with a venturi section okay uh, this is apparently a rectangular portion but this is the cross section view of a circular portion this is a cross section view so if if i draw a regular it will be like this this is a section view this is this is a section view okay so i have sectioned it this is a circular portion it would have been a pure circular portion but i have cut it and shown you the half half section of that uh, of that venturi of that venturi section in here you can see some important components the choke valve fuel discharge nozzle I will discuss this part as well, uh, but right now I am going to start with the venturi section. Here you can see, this is your this is your venturi section. Okay, this is your venturi section, and uh, in this venturi section you can see first it is converging, and then it is diverging. We have a converging and a diverging section. So I discussed in the last lecture as well that. In the carburetor, we basically have a converging and diverging, uh, uh, diverging section, uh, which will, which will, because of the pressure reduction, which will, which will take the fuel from the float chamber into in, into this venturi section, and uh, and the air will take that fuel, and not only it will take the fuel, but it will also atomize the fuel, which is also uh, very essential for making a homogeneous mixture it will also uh, atomize the fuel so what is happening uh, here is when your choke valve is open the incoming air is coming from this section when it goes into this converging section of the nozzle of this venturi it will 
it will start increasing the it will start increasing the velocity and not only that the velocity in uh, the velocity is increased at the expense of that drop in the pressure and since the pressure at this point at this point is reduced as compared to the pressure at this point this reduction in pressure this reduction in pressure will allow the fuel to flow from this combustion uh, this uh, float chamber through this metering orifice into the venturi section and when this air fuel mixture air is mixed with the fuel it will atomize the fuel and will take the fuel along with it towards the throttle well and then into your combustion chamber as well okay so the uh, so what what can we conclude regarding this venturi section air, air is incoming inside the venturi the velocity is increasing at the expense of the drop in pressure and because of that the fuel inside this float chamber will start moving from this float chamber to this venturi section and will go with the air towards the throttle valve and then into your intake manifold and your IC and your combustion chamber. When the flow moves from the float chamber to the venturi section, the pivot, float pivot will start, the level inside this float chamber will start decreasing and this float, uh, float pivot will drop, level of the float pivot will drop. Then the fuel from the strainer will start coming. When the level reaches the same, then the fuel will not come. Okay, so that's how that was the supply part which I which I mentioned that I will uh, I will explain uh, in the next point. So, fuel chamber was not only storing the fuel or adjusting the fuel level, but it is also supplying the fuel to the venturi section. So, uh, I have I have discussed the venturi section and also the fuel in discharge nozzle section. This this nozzle from which from which the fuel is being supplied this nozzle from which the fuel is being supplied from fuel chamber to the to the nozzle to the venturi section is called fuel discharge nozzle uh, next uh, we have a choke valve and the purpose of uh, this choke valve is simply to control the amount of the air uh, sometimes it happens that uh, if if this choke valve is not operating properly in your bike, you you started uh, in, uh, the rotating your choke valve in the bike engine to allow more air to enter in your combustion chamber, so that your bike so, you, you know that, so that your bike may have a better chance to get start. So uh, that is the purpose of the choke valve. Then we have a throttle valve. Throttle valve is at the other end of the carburetor. It is basically the purpose of this throttle valve is basically to regulate the air fuel, reg regulate the amount of a, uh, air fuel mixture which is going into the intake manifold and then into your combustion chambers. Um, depending upon the depending upon the uh, whatever the road load requirements are. So uh, these are the. These are the uh, basic components which uh, we have discussed so far. Uh, I hope it is uh, clear to you. We started with the idling and starting condition. Today we started with the idling and starting condition. Then we move towards cruising and normal power then to the maximum power. Then we discuss the basic some of the basic components of carburetor. Now moving towards the basic principle of carburetion. Since we have already discussed carburetor now, uh, 
understanding the principle of carburation won't be that much difficult now so before before uh, starting this uh, we need to understand you you, uh, you must understand you must know the names of these basic components fuel strainer from which the fuel is coming float chamber and float in which the fuel the chamber in which the fuel is stored and uh, the and then being supplied to your venturi section then we have a venturi venturi section the fuel discharge nozzle choke valve and a throttle valve all right now starting with the basic uh, with the principle of carburetion the airs the air enters the intake section of the carburetor from the air cleaner which removes suspended dust particles okay so uh, th uh, this point is also quite clear that before before this section uh, the air is basically coming from here this will be your uh, you can say air filter okay the air will be coming from air filter so that if it has some dust particles as well they are also removed it is mentioned uh, in the first line of this uh, of this slide then the air air then flows into the venturi section which is sometimes also referred as choke tube or a converging diverging nozzle where the air velocity increases at the expense of the decrease in pressure and i have already explained you that that the velocity of the air will increase when the air reaches from point 1 to point 2 and because of the increase in velocity the pressure will decrease and because of the because of this decrease in pressure there is a pressure difference between uh, this point 2 and inside the float chamber because of which the fuel would be the fuel would be sent from this float chamber the fuel will flow from this float from inside the float chamber into the into the section 2 into the part into the into this point 2 because of the pressure difference and then it will not only mix with the air the air will also atomizes it and then it will move towards the intake manifold and then into your combustion chambers so the air then flows into the venturi where the velocity will increase and the pressure will decrease the fuel level is maintained at constant height in the float chamber and how is it going to happen how how the question is how this fuel level is going to be maintained inside the float chamber i explained i explained you guys that because of this float pivot this when the level is maintained when the level is maintained float pivot and this supply line from this strainer is at same level but when the flow level decreases this float pivot will start dropping the level of this float pivot will start decreasing and then the new fuel will enter in the float chamber when the level reaches the same the float pivot will block this line again and no new fuel will come inside the float chamber from strainer so as the fuel moves from fuel metering device into the nozzle it will again go back new fuel will come and then it will again block the supply line from the strainer fuel pivot will block the supply line from the strainer so that is how the uh, flow level inside the combustion inside the float chamber will be maintained okay so uh, the fuel now moving towards the next point the fuel flows through the main jet main jet which is fuel metering orifice 
as a result of the pressure difference between the float chamber and the venturi throat. This is called carburetor depression through the fuel discharge nozzle into the venturi throat. And I also mentioned you guys earlier that fuel will flow from this, this float chamber to the point 2 because of the pressure difference between these points. This point, this point which is at point 2 and at this point at which there will be some pressure as well. Because of this pressure difference, <coughs> the, fuel, the fuel will flow from this float chamber into the, into the venturi section. And this pressure difference is called carburetor depression. This pressure difference is called carburetor depression. So I hope it will be clear to all of you guys that what is carburetor de uh, depression. Carburetor depression is basically the difference between the pressure uh, at the venturi throat and the float chamber. Throat, venturi throat is basically that section uh, which was at state, state 2 from which the converging section is then converting into the diverging section that is basically called the venturi throat. At throat the air stream atomizes the liquid fuel. So I, I also mentioned this earlier that not only the fuel will flow from the float chamber to uh, float chamber to the uh, venturi throat but it will air will also atomize that fuel as well. The fuel air mixture then flows through the diverging set of the venturi where the flow decelerates and some pressure recovery occurs. So again uh, after the venturi throat we basically we basically had a diverging section and when it passes through the diverging section uh, its velocity will start decreasing and that pressure drop which occurs uh, while moving from the converging section there will be some recovery in that pressure drop as well. The flow then passes uh, through the throttle valve and then enters into the intake manifold and then into the combustion chamber. Okay, so I hope I hope this uh, I had I have explained all the basic concepts and the operations of the BC, uh, of the basic components of the carburetor and not only the components of the carburetor but along with the al along with the components i have also explained the principle of carburetion as well so uh, i hope it will be all clear to you guys now uh, moving forward our this simple carburetor have some deficiencies as well as I explained earlier that during the during the uh, starting or idling condition we will we will require some we will require the rich air fuel mixture and not only that but uh, when we are accelerating then we will also require some require the rich air fuel mixture but under the normal or cruising operation we will require idling conditions uh, but uh, sorry uh, nor under the normal or cruising operation we will require lean air fuel mixture so these are some of the requirements which our simple carburetor may not satisfy therefore some additional uh, <coughs> equipments are being used which we will also discuss uh, which will be we will discuss uh, in the uh, next class as well but right now we are going through the basic deficiency what are the deficiencies in the elementary carburetor so uh, we will uh, now we will start discussing the uh, basic uh, basic deficiencies of uh, the deficiencies of an elementary carburetor uh, the one of the as I, as I mentioned earlier that at when you are operating on the idling condition or you have a starting 
condition you will require rich mixture and then on the in the power power uh, in, the, in, the, in the acceleration uh, condition as well you will require the rich, uh, rich mixture but when you are operating under the normal condition or when you are operating in the cruising operation you will require lean mixture so your elementary carburetor cannot obey uh, these conditions cannot obey these conditions and uh, will have to uh, and uh, there are some deficiencies regarding it and then we add some modern modern uh, equipment and some modern parts uh, in the basic elementary carburetor uh, which we will discuss in the next class then uh, right now uh, we will just discuss the these deficiencies of the elementary carburetor okay starting with the number one uh, at low speeds low loads at low loads the mixture becomes leaner while the engine requires the mixture to be enriched at low speed, low loads, because you have to overcome the friction, which we discussed earlier. You have to overcome the friction. Therefore, you require rich air fuel mixture. But since the choke valve is slightly open and lesser amount of the air is coming, and there will be a lesser carburetor depression uh, between the throat and the uh, float chamber. Therefore, a small amount of the fuel will be flowing into the uh, into the venturi throat, which is a deficiency because we require a rich air fuel mixture at low loads. Next, uh, at intermediate loads, the mixture equivalence ratio increases slightly as the flow air increases, while the engine requires an almost constant equivalence ratio first of all uh, you all must know about the equivalence ratio equivalence ratio is defined as the ratio between the actual air fuel ratio uh, to the stoichiometric air fuel ratio and when we are operating at the intermediate loads or during the cruising conditions we require same air fuel uh, we require same air fuel mixture but since your since your uh, choke valve is opening from uh, th this condition from 25 percent to 60 percent there is a quite quite variation in the movement in the opening of this throat valve which will also increases the air flow and then uh, the more the air come the more will be the fuel uh, fuel uh, from the float chamber to the uh, venturi throat as well then which which will ultimately increase the fuel air uh, uh, air fuel mixture but we require the same uh, same fuel air mixture we require the same equivalence ratio uh, at the normal or intermediate loads operation so this is the disadvantage this is the second disadvantage as the air flow approaches the maximum wide open throttle valve the air flow the equivalence ratio remains essentially constant however the mixture equivalence ratio should increase to 1.1 or greater to provide maximum power again uh, th that is the same point that uh, when you require higher loads we require rich air fuel mixture and your elementary carburetor would not be providing a rich air fuel mixture at the higher loads your basic carburetor will not provide the uh, rich air fuel mixture okay next point is uh, the elementary carburetor can neither compensate for transient phenomena in the intake manifold nor can it enrich the mixture during the engine starting and uh, warm up conditions then Uh, in the in this point basically we are talking about the sudden changes uh, in the load requirements your elementary carburetor cannot uh, incorporate the sudden changes let's say for example i am running my car and i suddenly press my accelerator I, now i require a rich air fuel mixture or i have suddenly stopped uh, my car then the because of the inertial effects uh, there there, uh, there are some there are some phenomena there is some duration in which we which I would have 
the incomplete combustion inside my car. Uh, so there are some deficiencies, uh, deficiencies, uh, deficiencies of this elementary carburetor, which uh, needs to be, uh, which needs to be uh, considered. Or so there might be some additional equipments which I, which I need to be, uh, which I need to install in my, in this elementary carburetor. Then the next is the elementary carburetor cannot adjust to changes in ambient air density. Okay, as we move uh, uh, towards the higher regions, the air density has increased and because of that the air fuel ratio increases, also increases. Uh, th there are the changes in the air fuel ratio as well, which will which this elementary carburetor cannot compensate. So there are some altitude compensators which are added in the carburetor uh, to overcome such conditions that if the density has been if if the density has been uh, increased at higher altitudes, uh, how can we overcome this situation in order to ensure that we have a proper combustion inside the combustion chamber? So altitude compensators are used for that purpose. Okay, uh, guys. Uh, so far. Uh, we we studied today we started with the uh, different operating conditions the idling is starting cruising normal power and the third one was the maximum power or the acceleration condition then we discussed the basic components of a carburetor in details then then we studied the principle of carburetion and then we studied in the last we studied the deficiencies of the elementary carburetor in the next class we will discuss some additional equipments which are incorporated in the modern carburetors and to overcome all of these deficiencies and uh, till now uh, i i will request all of you to go through these lectures carefully so that you may not have any problem in the uh, next uh, classes as well uh, okay in case if uh, there are any queries you can always contact me uh, through email okay uh, Allah is